Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. And um, really looking forward to doing this workshop. So what we're gonna be making today is birch baskets. So here's a few examples of just so that you can kind of see what kind of format we're going to be working in today, what we're kind of aiming for it to look like. And this is, it's shaped more like a bowl, uh, but there's a lot of different variations of baskets. Um, so, you know, they, they, you might have seen some other ones that are a little bit more intricate. Because this is an entry level workshop, we're going to be just using this as a basic format. And this is a good foundation that you can build off over time if this is something that you want to continue to do. Um, you know, after this experience, you'll see how much you can utilize and use the use the um, materials um, and see how they are. And then you can decide if it's something you want to explore further. But today we're just going to start with a very basic birch bark basket. So as you can see, um, it's made out of birch. Everybody should have received a 10 by 10 uh, piece of birch um, in their kit. And I also just wanted to start off by going over some of the supplies that you um, should be able to gather amongst things within your own home but also just to do a checklist of what was given to you by steps. So a um, few things that you're going to need and as you can see here I really want to emphasize that it's important even if you want to just watch this part first and then take a minute and pause and then get everything together that's totally okay um, but what I encourage you to do is to have everything set up and ready to go because as I explained in the workshop previous to this, um, birch bark tends to dry out super quickly. So one of the things that you can do to help your process so that it's not such a, you know, so it's not as difficult is to make sure that you have everything laid out and ready to go. So um, that means including cutting your strips um, of what you're going to sew. So you would have gotten, been given um, pieces of sinew. So I have some sinew here and it kind of looks like this. So you'll have had two arms lengths and you should have four strips, um, which is good. That's about all you're going to need. And then myself, I'm gonna be using some wax thread. Um, I really like this for, in terms of just even the color is really nice. Um, just something alternative, you can use You can use that as well. Sinew is really great because, um, well, both of these things are really great because you can actually burn the ends of the, of the, the thread. Um, so that it melts and then it creates a really strong seal at the end. So right off the bat you want to make sure you have everything everything ready to go. So you should have a pair of scissors. Doesn't matter what kind of scissors they are as long as they can cut through. Um, you know, say if they can cut through cardboard, that's great. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to, um, you could source out getting an X-Acto knife or a box color cutter. Um, but a pair of scissors is really good, That's that should be fine. Uh, another piece of uh, equipment that you might want to get is a ruler, um, and this is just for measuring, um, you know, and making sure that you have everything straight if that's what you want to do. Um, also a pencil if you want to mark on the birch um, where you're going to trim off things. And also you would have been provided bull clips. So these are actually um, to go and clip in holding the birch in place while you're sewing. Um, so we'll get to that part in a little bit. I just want to go over all of the uh, all of the materials. Um, another piece that you should have been doing is uh, having your birch sit in water. Warm water is preferred, and um, you might see here um, that I have my bin, and my water has been my birch has been soaking in the water. Um, I soaked it overnight, and then pretty much having it in there all day. So about a day and a half of soaking is really great. Um, you don't want to put it in any less than, you know, half a day because uh, your birch can crack um, depending on how big and thick your piece is. Um, so you want to make sure that you're kind of avoiding that by making sure you have it soaked. 
Um, and you also want to soak it all the way up to the point before you're ready to sew and you're ready to do the workshop. And once you've pulled it out of the water, it's going to dry very rapidly. So that's why I'm suggesting you have everything laid out ahead of time. Um, so you can just get to the sewing right away and as fast as, as quickly as possible, but also as safely as possible. Um, another piece that you'll have received in here is a Glover needle. So you can see that the needle is actually sheared in four points. So this needle is extremely sharp. So I just want to caution everybody who's doing this workshop um, to just be mindful of that. Um, I've actually put one of these through my finger before and it is not fun. <laughs> so just want to make sure that you're aware that it's a very, very sharp needle and it has to be in order to be able to penetrate the birch for when you're sewing. So you should have one of those. You should also have a piece of leather um, that's included in your kit. And this is basically just so that when you're using the needle because you're gonna be pushing through a lot, you're gonna be pushing through a lot with it. So this is just to lay on your hand to protect your skin. So when you're pushing with the needle from behind, you're not gonna penetrate or you know hurt your skin. Um, and it just also allows for a little bit more of a grip. So that's there. Um, you also should have Oh, what else did you have here? Yeah, scissors, and like I said, and then here there's some extra things that you can acquire. Um, you should also have um, the mix of, it's not that it's necessary, it's just that it makes the process a bit easier. So for myself, I have a pair of pliers here to be able to pull the needle, um, and that makes things a little bit easier, makes it go a bit quicker. I also have an awl. So if you have access to these things, then that's a definite plus, but it's not necessary. But in all is helpful, say if you get into a knot, so I can show you an area here. Um, so say here, you can see that there is a knot. The wood is kind of, you know, bulbous here. So in order to get through that, sometimes you have to use an awl or something to poke through first so you can run your needle through. Um, as I mentioned before, box cutters handy if that's something that you have access to. If you also could have access to an X-Acto knife, that helps with cutting the birch uh, really quickly um, when you're trying to trim it down. But again, it's not necessary. You can do all of that with scissors. You also should have in, had in your kit included um, a, you know, a selection of embroidery thread. And this is primarily for your design work, um, your personalization of your birch basket. So you can see here on this one, I did, and it's uh, just a really quick symbolism of water. And that is in representation of my spirit name. So that's something that I added on my basket. And um, you know, this is something just to start thinking about when you start the process of how this is going to you know, transfer to your basket. And you know what, maybe thinking about what it is that you might want to put on here. You might want to only do one section, you might want to just do all of them. Or maybe do a design. It's really up to you what you want to do and how ambitious you are. Um, so yeah, that's about all we have for just being prepped. And obviously making sure that you have all of your lines, you know, all of your thread cut prior to, that's just going to help you speed up the process of the sewing so that, you know, you can make it within the time so that it doesn't dry out and start to crack. Um, it also makes it harder on your hands when it's that way. And I also don't, um, I don't dump out the water when I've had it soaking. I just keep it really close because if you find that it's drying out too quickly, what you can do is if you started to sew, you can keep the bull clips on the corners um, and you can actually just resubmerge it back into the water and um, you know, keep it in there for maybe a half an hour and then come back to it and then you can see it'll be a little bit more porous, it'll be a little bit more flexible again. So if you absolutely have to do that, then you can keep the water close by and you can also keep wetting it with your hand or if you have a spray bottle, you could do that as well. Just to keep it moist because that's really important when we're doing this process. Okay, so now we're going to get to the sewing part. So you should be, you should, another just quick tip for when you're making your basket and you've submerged it, um, it's really good to have something that's heavy so that it weighs it down, so that all of the birch is submerged in the water. That's really important in order to make sure that it's even and it doesn't crack. So 
I had to put something funny here. I actually had to put like <laughs> a little vase with water in it. Um, but that's what worked, so that was what I used. <laughs> Usually I would use like a rock or something, but I didn't have that right at that point, so. So you can take your birch out of the water and just take a look at it because you should be able to see if it's a little crooked. Like you can see on my sheet that it's a bit crooked. Um, it's kind of leaning towards the one side. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to just trim it so that to make it as much of a square, a symmetrical square as possible. So if I'm going by this, this is where the ruler comes in handy and it's just to really measure you know, across so that you have an even square. If you want, you can draw right on it the pencil, like I had mentioned, but I'm just gonna take this and cut this with an X-Acto knife. Again, you can do this with a, with a pencil and then you can go in and cut it after. That's not a problem. So just to get that line there so that I can see where it is. Good. And then, can just cut it. So birch is actually pretty easy to cut. Um, doesn't really take much. And like I said, as you can see, like the the exacto knife actually really helped it. So if you have an exacto knife or butter <laughs> um, box cutter, like I mentioned, that's super helpful. But again, not necessary. You can just do this with scissors, and you can trace it with a pencil. So that looks good. And then you can see there's a little bit on this side that's a little bit uneven. So I just want to make sure, again, trying to make it as symmetrical as possible. Another part of making baskets is, as well, as what I was taught, is, you know, you can tr do your best to make it as even as possible, because that's going to allow for, you know, even sides and all of those things. But another part of making them is that, you know, every single one is different. Um, you know, birch is a lot like us in that, you know, there's all kinds of different people in the world, there's all different kinds of cultures, um, and there's not one, you know, no two baskets are gonna be the same. And I don't think, you know, nor should they be. And that's really what makes them interesting and what makes them works of art. Um, it really just depends, right? So I really like that idea, you know, you can try to do this as, <laughs> as close and symmetrical as possible, but again, it's not a huge, huge necessity. So you just cut this. Again, we're aiming for as symmetrical as much as possible of a square. Okay. So there we go. Now, you can decide which side you want to do. Um, you know, you can either have it go with the way that it's curling. It's just similar to these baskets here of how they ended up. Um, or you can do it reversal and you can have it this way. The thing I will just mention for you is to just be cautious because, you know, these are pretty thick, these are pretty thick sheets. Um, usually we tend to use a bit thinner, um, but again, it's really depends on what we, what you can find even too, if you're going to be going out and harvesting your own or, you know, collecting your own. Um, so it's really up to you. So I'm actually going to go with the actual you know, the actual flexibility of where it's curling. And you can see that it's pretty nimble right now. And that's really good because that means that it was soaked long enough. If you're doing this and it's cracking, um, you might need to soak it for a little bit more. Um, you probably can work it. I actually have done that before. It's just that you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, but in order to just de-stress everybody, if it is cracking, I would just put it back in for a little while. So now that we have it cut straight, and there's, it's pretty even as a square, what you're going to do then is you're going to put in uh, and make incisions, make a cut on the corners. So if you want to do this, you can measure it with a ruler so that you're, you know, exactly. But again, um, I kind of like how baskets end up being whatever shape it is that they're going to be um, and just kind of, you know, winging it. But approximately you're gonna make about a two inch incision and cut. On, a, on each corner, so basically making an X on the box. Um, you don't have to cut all the way, you're just cutting you know, two inches here, two inches here, two inches here, two inches here. If you wanna do three inches, just make sure that two inches is a good, good standard size for it to be a certain height. If you wanted it to be a little bit higher, you could go three inches and then it's gonna make the walls of the basket higher. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this corner here. I'm gonna measure this. Yeah, see that's about three. So I'm just gonna do three here. The other thing you can do as well when you have the X-Acto knife is you can, you know, you can make an incision prior to and put it right at three and you can measure it that way if it makes you a little bit more comfortable. I like to just eyeball stuff, but you know, I know not everybody likes to do that. Right? So that's kind of how you're making. And you can use the, the ruler to measure out too if that makes you more comfortable. Whatever way, if you want to just like, just randomize it and just go with the flow and see how it comes out, that's kind of the things that I like to do. Um, it's super fun that way. <laughs> so again, you're gonna cut in the corner. to about so that it matches as much as possible. But again, like I said, I wouldn't worry too much about that because then you're gonna get something really unique. Now let's measure this again, just make sure that this is about three. And a little bit more. There we go. And this one's about three, yep. This one's about three, and this one will be, okay. There you go. Okay, so now that we've done this piece, we can start to just pull these pieces and just start to form it a bit. Same on this side, same on this side. And what you're going to do, you're going to get your bowl clips ready. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take up one side and then fold it into itself. Just like this. Okay? So you can just take one side. Whatever side is, is being the most lenient, just do it like that. That's the easiest way. And again, like I mentioned, if you, f if you hear cracking, you know, you need a little bit more time, a little bit more soaking. So you take your bowl clip clip it there and you can kind of push it together a bit more while it's there so that you can make a nice little section here okay and you can always um, adjust them a bit once you get them in place okay and there's one more so you can see what I'm doing here if you want them to be unified you can also make sure that they're all kind of you know on one particular side it's really up to you how you want to do that. Okay, clip it in there, so you can see. Same thing over here. Right. So you can hear, right, it's cracking a little bit. Just be really careful. Just go slowly. So that one's not really, this one's moving a bit better on this side. Okay, it takes a little bit of maneuvering, but again, reminder, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if actually, if anything, it's good if it has a bit of personality. Oops. Come on. It's a little, can be a little testy, but that's okay. All right. This one's being a little tricky. It's okay. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get it. Okay. Much as over as possible. 
Okay. So here we go. And you can, like I said, you, like I'm showing you here, you can just try to form it gently. Just give it a little bit of encouragement and it'll start to shape up the way that you want it to. Okay. So I'm trying this one again. This one a bit closer. There we go. And the reason for the bowl clips is a couple things. So first of all, I mean, it's going to hold everything in place, but birch really had, the reason why we you know we use these this tree is for a number of reasons but one of the main ones is is that whenever we would form it um, and you know once it starts to dry it'll dry in place so as much as the sewing helps it stick together what really actually helps it fuse together is that it will form to whatever form it's kind of you know encouraged to go to so that's super super cool and it makes it very sturdy and can last a long time so that's the next part here and um, you know again don't let it sit too long so your next piece there will be moving on to the sewing so make sure again this is why you have all your pieces cut ahead of time and then you want to thread your needle and if you're not particularly good at this part and somebody else in your house is just get them to do it for you <laughs> And you just pull it through and you want to double it. You want to have it doubled. And then at the end, you're going to just loop it through, make a knot at the bottom. Okay. And then you can cut off the ends a little bit. Don't cut the knot off, just the ends. Okay. And because yours is sinew, you can actually, and the same thing with this wax one, is that you can burn it the ends here you can see and it will make a really tight seal so that it won't come apart and you get your wood your leather piece here get that in place I actually have a thimble that I've made it's it's pretty beaten up um, I bead with this all the time and make things like this with it uh, so this is a piece of moose that I sewed together and it's been I've had it for Ooh, I don't know, maybe six years now. So it's seen some things, but it's really good for these kinds of these kinds of things. So I would lay it over my middle finger, and that is what's going to help you just keep it st steady and not hurt your hands. So now, going into the sewing part, what you're going to want to do is always start from the inside, whatever your inside is. You're going to want to start down here, and the thing as well is that um, you can see on this basket that it's only sewn on one side, right? And there's technically two, because if you look inside, there's another side here. Now, you can choose to sew both sides so that you basically make like a triangle. Um, you can do that, it's not necessary, but if you wanna do that just for safety, you can, you can definitely go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start from the inside. And I always start down in the middle. And you're just gonna wiggle it around in kind of like a twisty motion and then you're gonna see it'll come through and then you push through and then this is when uh, the pliers come in handy if you have any if not you can always just push it through and pull and you push it pull it through pull it all the way through and then now you're gonna make kind of like a running stitch you're gonna go here through then you're gonna come out around here and then over and through and then again and then go backwards so that you make an X so I'll show you so you're gonna go over top okay right hopefully you can see this properly and then you twist And as I mentioned before, just be super careful, okay? Because this needle is no joke. It really isn't. It's super hard. Super, super, not hard, but it's super sharp. Um, and that's why it has to be in order to get through this because it's super hard to get through, right? Some of these. So you're gonna go over here. Okay. 
again and then you can see where it went, right? So I'm kind of making long ones today. You don't have to do that. You can make short ones if you want, but I'm kind of going across the whole length from the one fold to the other fold. See? And then now I'm gonna go back over like this and make an X so you can see. Pull this through so you can see. And then I've made the X. And then I'm gonna go back over here, make another one on the inside. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm gonna make another one this way and go in on the bottom. <clears throat> Okay, and then when you get to the bottom, what you're gonna wanna do is you can go through again. Okay. Now, this, you wanna leave a loop inside about that much. So only pull it in, pull it through halfway so that you have a little loop through there. And then you're gonna go through near to the same spot, but maybe a little bit further. Okay, and then you want to go through the loop. All right, like that. Oh, I had it right the first time, like this. Why is this not doing this? Let's go through here. Okay, so like that, and loop it through so that you have a little bit of a knot. And then you're just gonna pull it as tight as you possibly can. Okay, and then now that you're at that section, you just cut here, cut the end off so you have a little bit left, and then you're gonna loop, make some knots. Again, pull as tight as you can, knot again, as tight as you can, and then you can cut the excess off, and you can burn the end similar to what I did earlier. If not, you can just push it and form it into the little nook there and there you go then you've done one side and then you continue to do the same thing for the rest of them okay so now you have all of the sides sewn and you can see here on the nice crisscross And you can probably feel already that it's pretty pretty well dry. It's already starting to dry and form. You can push it, you know, a little bit, try and keep forming it and encouraging it to go the way you want. And then the next step here is, you know, you're gonna have these little diamond shape, you know, these pointy parts. All you need to do is just, you know, you can keep them, but they're, you know, obviously they kind of look funny. Um, but all you need to do is just trim it. So you can just trim it and round it out. There you go. You can see. As long as you're not cutting off any of the sewing, it should be fine. And just right there. There we go. And then this one here. There. And you have your basket. So another piece as well that you can do is if you have any extra pieces or say for example that your birch kind of split and you took a layer off you can you know, cut strips of this and you can kind of fold it over the edges 
right? And you can sew in a border. You can cut, you see that sometimes in certain baskets. Um, and the other piece as well is if you wanted to add to this later on, you could source your own birch and cut a strip that's long enough and you can actually attach a handle from this side to this side, you know, so it's like a little tiny basket. But this is good for gathering. I mean, you can gather stuff in here. Um, you know, depending on how tight you sewed, it could be watertight. And uh, it's definitely very beautiful, for sure. I mean, all of them, again, are going to be very different and unique because the patterning is different and unique. And also how you sew them, if you went, you know, this way or you went the other way with the birch on the inside. Um, it's really up to you of how you want to do that. And then the last piece here is while it's still, you know, somewhat damp um, and, and wetted, you want to then get your embroidery thread and you can start, you know, doing designs and what you're going to do again is sew from the inside, right? So that it's exposed on the outside, outer rim of the basket. Or if you want to do it the other way, again, it's really depending on how you want. Um, but ultimately, this is how I did one on this side. Again, as you can see on the inside of here, it's just sewn on the inside, very similar to embroidery, how you would do a regular embroidery and um, similar to the stitching that you did on the sides. So I really encourage you just to have fun and you know, just go with however you feel and feel very accomplished that you were able to do this because I will admit this is not an easy craft to do. It's not an easy, um, an easy um, you know, tradition at all. It takes a lot of work and I even have a blister right now. So I mean, that could potentially happen. But again, just take your time and, you know, just really work with what the birch is kind of telling you and which way it's getting formed. And you're gonna have a really, really amazing piece after, um, you know, and be able to not only carry the knowledge that was shared um, earlier with the, the elder, um, and then also in my pre-workshop with the symbolism and understanding a bit more about why we use these things and how. Um, yeah, then, you can, then this is the end result. Um, it's a very satisfying and something you can have and treasure for a really long time. So that's it. And thank you so much for being a participant in the workshop. I hope you had a great time. And as of course, you know, I'm gonna be providing some time um, for support if somebody's having a bit of a tricky issue. Um, but again, like I mentioned, just take your time, um, be patient with it, and go with the flow. And the most important part is make sure you do this as close as much as possible to when it was soaked. Um, keeping it damp and moist is really what's going to be helpful for you in terms of making this a bit easier for you of a process. Okay, so again. Miigwech and Nya, thank you so much. And till next time, peace.